You know, a lot was happening here in Seven Lakes, West End, North Carolina as well. I remember like it was yesterday, Kent coming into the bedroom and saying, Mary, I think God has called me to start a church here in Seven Lakes. And he said, what do you think? And I'm like, Ken, I can't not say yes. If God's calling you, that's what we need to do. And almost right away, other people caught that vision as well. Mike and Gay Martin were the first to catch that vision. They wanted something more for their children. And we started meeting in their parents' basement and having Bible studies. And before we knew it, the Collard family came and the Hopplers, and we started growing. And it was a small group, but we were pretty powerful. And Ken had a lot of connections to Liberty. And, he, and we started meeting in different places all over our little town of West End. And we would have people come from Liberty um, Al Worthington, the um, baseball coach, a former, um, a former big league player came and he conducted a service. We had singers come. We ate together. Um, Gay Martin cooked us dinner more than I could tell you. People were in and out of our house all the time. We had volleyball games set up in our front yard. But our very first service was something so special. That day a group from Liberty had come down and they passed out flyers inviting people to church and we had about 40 people there. And Miss Fry, the principal at the time, allowed us to meet in the music room at West End. And we had so many well-wishers and it was just an amazing day. And that first service was September 11th, 1988 and our church was growing, our family was growing, we had two beautiful girls, and we also had the third girl on the way. But God took care of us through some sweet, sweet people. He took care of us, and He's still taking care of us today here at Seven Lakes Baptist Church. Uh, we were not your typical pastor and family. Um, Ken sold insurance to make ends meet. He also sold snow cones, which wasn't too bad for our girls. He, um, we made snow cone juice in our kitchen, and every night um, when he came back from selling snow cones, uh, we all gathered around and we had our favorite, favorite flavors of snow cones. And I know the Martins have had many snow cones. Um, from Ken, but that how we we kind of get all that money together, and we knew we had supper. Um, I also remember Gay's parents um, from their church had gotten out one of those boards, you know, that you see a lot of church have how many had in Sunday school, and you know how many were there last week, and and the offering. And I, I remember thinking, oh, maybe if we get more than fifty dollars, we can pay for the electricity here and the rent, and then maybe we might have something extra too. But God was good, He blessed, and He took care of us. Um, he took care of us so much, and he, and he still is so faithful. That's what's incredible about this journey. He was faithful from the beginning, and He was faithful to us. Even from the day He called Ken home, and I felt like He was saying, come home, a good and faithful servant. And I could not do this without our children. I have to say something about our children. God has blessed us with three beautiful, beautiful girls, Nikki, Christy, and Katie, and they've been a part, just as much a part of our ministry. They've invited kids to our Awana program, to our youth program, um, all the youth activities we did, and along with Bobby Sue Martin and um, Joy Collard and the twins. Um, the Collar Boys and Tom Hoppler, Mark and Stephanie Hoppler, all of those kids um, had a love for Jesus and invited their friends and we had such a strong youth, youth program and we still do today because we had such a love for kids. Um, but God is continuing to bless and I want to thank my girls for being faithful and for loving their daddy for loving me, for loving Summit Lakes Baptist Church, and most of all, for loving Jesus.
When we first started going, the church was about a third of the Episcopal church down the road. It was so small that if you put up a Christmas tree, it'd wipe out about half the seating. And Pastor Hankins was an excellent preacher and people were coming to the Lord. And one day an older gentleman come up during the altar call. Pastor thought he was getting saved and he come up and said, Pastor, you got a bathroom in this place? And then another older gentleman would get in the habit of going to the bathroom during the service and the bathroom was behind the pulpit. He would go to the bathroom and leave the door open and everybody could hear him. So Pastor Ken started assigning people and half the time it was me to follow him up and close the door. Talk about a tent situation. Another thing we used to do was we'd serve a meal on Wednesdays and everybody could eat for, seemed like it was fifty, and only paid for three people at the most, so it made it good for families. And we baptized in the lake instead of having the, the baptismal. And that was really neat, going to somebody's house, and gathering and singing. As I think back and remember those days, one of the things I really liked was the closeness of the church. Everybody was involved in everything. Even back then, we had a huge Awana prayer. We had more Awana kids than we had church members. None of them came to church, but they all loved to Awana. Ken was super at putting together a fascinating time. We, we'd go bowling and skating, and it was just a good time. Part of the history of Seven Lakes Baptist Church has been its children's ministry. Pastor Ken always had a desire that if we could reach the children for Christ, we could reach the parents. From day one, we had the Awana program established. All members of the church uh, participated. We met in the West End Gym. We met in the West End Elementary Gym. Uh, we had several different locations. One night, we had a family, a young family come, Sandra Brown, it was the Brown family. Sandra came to watch and see what her children did, watching as they went through game time and uh, reciting their verses. And hearing the gospel, Sandra realized that she had never accepted Christ as Savior. Pastor Kim was able to go visit them in the home and lead Sandra to Christ. Not only did Sandra come to know Christ, but Benny realized that being raised in the church that he needed to rededicate his life to Christ. Now their children are grown and have children of their own and they're following in the footsteps. The church overflows with testimonies like that. Stories where the children came to faith in Christ first and the parents soon followed. Just look at what we do and who we are. We have always poured into our children. Our VBS is epic. And before we were VBS, we were vacation Bible time. And those were awesome as well. But I am getting ahead of myself. The church was growing and it was slow. But have we told you yet that God is so good? When the remaining two thirds of the building in which we held services became available, we stepped out on faith and took over the entire building. Almost immediately, the services were full. So now we were officially a storefront church with 14 other buildings and seven lakes. We used Mark Stewart's office and Dr. Kavanaugh's office for adults, the Peachtree Center for middle school youth, and Bob's Pizza for the high school youth. A world of children daycare was used for nursery through fifth grades and children's church. The church office was in the executive center. I will be honest, I have never been able to count more than eight buildings that the church used, but I think that Pastor Ken also included the storage buildings and the vehicles that transported everyone. These were exciting times though, because if you were going to attend Seven Lakes Baptist, we needed you to serve. The people who serve always grow the most. That is still true today. And the harvest is truly plenty, but the laborers are few. It had become apparent that we needed a permanent central space to call our own. We couldn't just keep borrowing and renting buildings all over West End and Seven Lakes. The church began to look for property but there was very little available for sale in Seven Lakes, or if it was, it was not suitable for building a church. Through some events that only God and Sandy Stewart could work out, we eventually purchased the property that we are on now. 
It was truly miraculous. Somewhere between renting our buildings and building the church, there is a story that must be told because it speaks to the heart of who we are. Pastor Hankins often went to eat lunch at Bob's Pizza here in Seven Lakes. Wayne Newcomer, the owner, was a believer that he was married to Walt's son, who was Buddhist. Pastor Hankins presented the gospel to Walt's son very clearly and asked her if she was ready to surrender to Christ. She said, not today. After that, every time Pastor Hankins went in there, he would ask her if today is the day. For many years, she would tell him, not today. Then finally, one day she said, yes, today is the day. She trusted Jesus right there in the kitchen of Bob's Pizza and surrendered to Christ. She became one of the most amazing prayer warriors that I have ever seen. She would come to the property at 4 a.m. and walk that property and pray. Wayne and Walt's son even opened up Bob's Pizza for the youth to have Sunday school every week. We would have gatherings there all of the time, and the young girls would be his wait staff. Yes. Another life transformed by the power of the gospel. By the year 2000, the church knew that they needed their own building, but Pastor Hankins' heart was always on ministry. He knew that they needed a youth pastor. So rather than start construction on a new facility, the church hired Chris. We had no way of knowing that the day we moved here, Pastor Ken would have a stroke. We might not have come if we'd known. Chris's first six months in ministry were spent on his knees because he had no idea what else to do. It was probably the best way for both him and Ken to start ministry together. Ken had no choice but to trust Chris, and Chris had no choice but to trust God. God did bring some wonderful men into our lives during that time. Dr. Moon, Pastor Larry Lambert, and Pastor Bobby Branch were such a blessing to us during that time. In 2001, we finally broke ground and completed construction on that building. In true Ken Hankins style, the first church service was quite an event. We all marched down from the old rented space and celebrated in our brand new shiny building. It wasn't long after that, um, that we moved in, that we realized we were already out of space. There wasn't room to run Awana and our youth group had to take over the fellowship hall because we couldn't fit anywhere else. So in 2005, we built the Hankins Family Life Center. Life at SLBC was blossoming. We enjoyed several years of growth and peace. And God had taught us to trust him during the good times, but we didn't know he was preparing us for some storms to come. You know, everyone goes through tough times in life, and SLBC is no exception. From 2007 to 2009, there were some staff changes and other transitions, but the church continued on. And in 2009, that big storm hit. Um, Pastor Hankins suddenly became ill and passed away. And it was very difficult, and it was easy to wonder why God allows his people to go through difficult times. But the truth is that God always uses those difficult times to shape us to be better used for his purposes. Romans 8 28 tells us that all things work together for good for those who love God, for those who are called according to his purpose. During that time, some people moved on to other ministries, some people held down the fort, but God was glorified. 